Well, hello everyone. We're now in Xuanhua City. Well, Xuanhua is a place、uh, somewhere a hundred kilometers to the to the northwest of Beijing, and we're now inside a vineyard here. Well, this is this place is famous because well, the history of people gra growing grapes here could be traced back to over one thousand years, actually nearly two thousand years. And、uh, this place is famous not just because the variety here is called the milk grape, it's also because that people are using a very unique way to plant grapes. And we're lucky to have、uh, one of、uh, the owner of one of the biggest vineyards here, Mr. Qiao, and he will show us. Uh, of his vineyard. Uh, Chao 先生，你好啊。我们今天呢、哎、来到您那个葡萄园啊、哎。您帮我们介绍介绍，就是首先呢，我们咱们宣化这个牛奶葡萄很有名啊。同时呢，咱们这个呃种植园呢又是这种漏斗状的这样的这个种植园的种植方式啊。这个是怎么有什么讲究吗？为什么要这么种？宣化葡萄历史悠久啊。宣化是个城市传统葡萄园。嗯啊。为什么叫它城市传统葡萄园？ So this is a traditional industry, and it was called the traditional city、uh, grape garden. So why it was called a city? Because traditionally it was grown in a city. We have many different types of grapes here. And、uh, dozens of grapes are planted. At one place, but they spread to all directions. You can come and take a look at the structure here. So those are the grapes hung on a grape vine. Yes, those are the best grapes. And it、uh, features a very late time of、uh, a maturity. So now is the best time, actually. It's、uh, fully ripe. So this is just one grape vine. Yes,、uh, it's a semicircle, and this is simply like a tunnel-shaped chalice. And we also call it the lotus shape. And it's very similar to the lotus、uh, mat of the monks. So we have many different names for this kind of structure. So where can we take a look at the inner structure of this grapevine? You can come inside. Take this way, please, because this is actually a very huge structure. <laughs> so you need to、uh, sneak in. Yeah. Well, that's kind of hard. So for hundreds of years, the structure has been maintained like this. For hundreds of years, we grow dozens of grape. Vines in one、uh, hole on Earth, and the grape vine simply spreads to all directions. According to ancient record, we have a giant master structure. We also have smaller structures beneath or under、uh, those master structures. So this is the structure that we have been using for hundreds of years, and、uh, we just build this. Grapevine, layer by layer, and with the passage of time, it grows bigger. So you can take a look how thick the grapevine is. Traditionally, it was planted at the very center, and later, when we ran out of space, we just moved it a little bit to the side. So this is this funnel-shaped chalice that I was talking about, and this is just like a sat satellite receiver. 
Well, it allows you to bring ample sunlight to the grapes. So, in addition to grapes, I see you have a lot of other fruits. Yes, let me bring you to the other fruits that I planted. So, this is my colleague who is picking grapes. So this will be the last batch of grapes that you pick in this autumn season. Yes, because we just had the National Day holiday. A lot of travelers came here and they want to bring back the grapes. So now we have the high-speed railway connecting Xianghua to Beijing. And does that benefit you a lot? The high-speed railway has benefited us enormously. Uh, we have a lot of uh, self-drive uh, tours, and that's uh, in the past, but when the high-speed railway was put into operation, you don't need to spend a lot of time on highways, and uh, it's only 40 minutes from Beijing to this place. So, how does that compare to self-drive tour? Well, if you drive a car, it's uh, three hours. And with the train, it's only 40 minutes. So it's super convenient. You can simply come here by train and then take a walk, have some sightseeing in Xuanhua, and then you can come back on the same day. So what is the sales like this year? Well, we had tremendous uh, sales this year, and it's a very good sale for this season because the government spent a lot of effort in publicizing our industry. There is a lot of attention and coverage from the municipal, provincial, and national media. So that is why we have very good economic result this year. So you mentioned that you were growing other fruits. Yes, you can see one from over there. Uh, you can take a look at that melon, and that weighs roughly 50 kilos. Well, everything here is self-sufficient, and we don't need to go out to the market to buy vegetable, and we grow them in our own courtyard, and you can basically grow anything you eat. So there are a lot of uh, grape vines here. So how many years of history do those grape vines have? So what you see from my position, the youngest one had a history of 600 years. So what you now see around you, so we have grape vines that are hundreds of years old, and uh, so it's everywhere. And you can take a look at this one. This is a very thick grape tree, and uh, we have even older grape vines, and you can take a look here. And this is a type of uh, grass. And this grass has been planted alongside grapes for centuries. So what is the function of this grass? Because we, with the leaf of this grass, we can actually tie the uh, branches of the grape tree uh, to the structure. So we can make the best use of the grass here. And uh, when the grape is ripe, and this grass turns uh, pale, and it doesn't give you any pollution. So it accompanies the overall growth process of the grapes. And it's very suitable here. And you can see that now the grapes, they are uh, ripe, but this grass 
is still in green color, and uh, we use this grass in spring as well as in summer. So, so this is what we use also to wrap up the uh, rice uh, puddles at the Dragon Boat Festival. So how many types of uh, plants do you have here? We have roughly 60 to 70 uh, types. We have uh, dozens of flowers, uh, grass, we have fruits and vegetable as well. Well, to my knowledge, uh, this was designated as a key global agricultural heritage by the FAO in 2013. How does that impact your business? So our vineyard was designated by FAO in 2013 as a key global agricultural heritage. This is a very good recognition to our industry. It played a very important role in preserving and further promoting our industry. It also mobilized the efforts of the government as well as the private sector to further engage in the preservation and protection of this industry. All the locals here in Xianhua have the strongest aspiration to return and sustain this industry. So we have a monument behind us. Yes, this is the monument designed for the event, and it was uh, inscribed by the Xianhua Municipal Publicity Department. Uh, this inscription basically introduces the history of group planning in this city. Here it says it has a history of 1,800 years. You can read from the inscription that it actually has the history of uh, 2,000 years, and, but Xianhua as a city only has the history of 2,300 years. So 2,000 years ago, uh, Zhang Qian had a voyage to uh, Middle East, and then he brought back to he brought back the grapes to China. Yes, this can date back to Han Dynasty. So, do you know who was the person that planted grapes? At the very beginning, grapes in Xianhua were planted in temples, while we were using this funnel-shaped trellis, because in Buddhism there is this lotus uh, mat, which is accompanying those Buddha and monks. So and this is also the best structure for those monks to practice their martial art because it's uh, naturally protect a shade under the sunshine. So it's not a product and the monks, they don't sell them and they use it as a as a dish for guests, uh, even though some may sell it, it's not a very good scale. And then the grapes was introduced from temples to big families, big household. So that is the very beginning of the cultural economy. So why don't you take us around in this, in this uh, vineyard? So you have been growing grapes for generations? Yes, from what I rem what I can remember, my father and my grandfather, both of them, they were growing grapes for a living. So when did you start to grow grapes? So I picked up this business when I graduated from middle school. That was in 1933. At that time, we were working at the collectives of our village and up until present. I have been doing this for 40 years. So I think you're one of the masterminds, one of the masters in uh, uh, grape growing in this place. 
Well, uh, you can say that. So can you tell us some of your techniques? Grapes in Xianhua, they produce uh, one batch only one year, uh, in, in every year, and it grows for 180 days, and uh, you grow the, the grapes uh, in March or early April, and uh, by the end of October or in mid-October, the grapes would become ripe and it's ready for picking. Uh, now is the time you dig some uh, lines on the soil. Uh, the grapes here are different from other places. So in Xianhua, it's a little bit cold here. We have relatively a very low temperature in winter. It's the winds that is very big. And, but it's such a miracle that grapes have been growing here for more than 2,000 years. And this is inseparable from the techniques that we have here. Grapes elsewhere. So they simply uh, bury the uh, roots of the grapes with soil, and that's it. But in Xianhua, it's quite different. So we actually give the roots a lot of space beneath the soil, so it can breathe even in winter season. So we first dig a hole on the soil, then we cut the branches of the grapes, then we uh, build a structure for the grape tree, and after we finished with the scaffolds or the uh, poles, then we are ready to plant the grape tree into the soil. So it's very similar to a cellar. You're kind of uh, planting this grape in a cellar, and because this can uh, maintain the temperature and humidity of the roots. So, but nowadays we're using different uh, techniques, of course. We're using different uh, poles. Uh, this is the technique that we have been using for hundreds of years, and throughout the process, there is very uh, meticulous care from human beings. Protect the vineyard for over a thousand years is that people will keep these plants alive uh, in winter. You see now, this is in autumn, but in winter, it is a completely different world. The wind is very strong and the snow is heavy. So how to make, how to keep these plants survive the winter? They will bury these uh, plants. They will bury them and bury them under soil, under uh, a specially built place uh, for, these, uh, for these grapes to, in order to save them from the winter. And every year they repeat this over and over for over a thousand years. So, Mr. Chow, we have a mount here. So, how many such vineyard, vineyards do you still have uh, in a village? So, we have for this vineyard, it's uh, 50 mu. And for vineyards of this size, we have roughly six in this village. So on um, each structure, how many different types of plants that you have? So for the Chow family, we have uh, 30 uh, structures of uh, grapevine. So how about in Xianhua in total. Well, in Xianhua, I would, see, I, I would say we have uh, roughly 
Uh, in my village, I would say we have roughly 2,000 such structures. So have you developed tourism? Yes, uh, because the tourism can um, strengthen the protection of this industry. So those uh, those are grown uh, by your family? Yes. So what is your job like on a daily uh, basis? You know, I do a, do a lot of uh, labor work on a field. Do you have someone to help you? At the busy season, for example, in this October, I would uh, hire some assistants. Uh, they come and help me with the labor work. And so also in spring, I would hire some additional hands to build this structure. So this is the bird view of this whole vineyard. Yes, the district government is very committed to protecting this uh, vineyard. And uh, they built this observatory deck and platform so that we can have a bird view of the, all the vineyard. And from here, you can have a general picture what this place is like. Uh, so this is the north side. So now you can see those uh, funnel-shaped trellises. Uh, we had some uh, frost a couple of days ago, and the temperature was very low, and that is why some of the leaves have turned yellow. So I saw some uh, leaves of different color. Uh, it's uh, it's it looks so autumn. So you can see that uh, our vineyard is actually surrounded by those uh, high rises and those uh, buildings. Oh, it's such a nice view here, and you can see the the, uh, the funnel grape grape uh, if, if we describe it, you may you may not you not have the the I mean the, uh, the the image. But now, if you look at look over here, you can see that these are one group. This is one grid, and there's another one. It's just like like uh, a green bow, you know, side by side, and it's stretching all the way to the edge of this village. And this is this is the vineyard that's inside the city, inside Shenhua. So, Mr. Chow. So from. What we can see here, there is a vineyard everywhere. So was it bigger in the past? Yes, and those high rises that you see right now, traditionally they were occupied by vineyard. Amazing. So urbanization has actually uh, shrinked our uh, vineyard acres. So if you look to the north, you will see the ancient city wall of this place. Yes, I can still see part of that wall. So are we located at the very center of the city? The very center of the city is only 500 meters away. So that was the administrative center of the city. I heard that there were uh, there, there were a lot of uh, very old uh, grape vine. So, can you maybe uh, take us to one of those sites?
So where do those travelers come from? Most of them are from Hebei, Beijing, and Tianjin, and we also have travelers from Tianjin, uh, Inner Mongolia. In summer, we had a lot of uh, travelers. So for the cultural economy, uh, who developed this? I think it was developed throughout history. Traditionally, we had the irrigation pitch. Uh, traditionally, we surround this vineyard with a wall. And this culture was uh, shared by many different families. Uh, so in the past, it was actually separated. But later, we just uh, broke through different walls and different culture art. Well, how does that help with the overall atmosphere and also from a management perspective? Well, I think it helps a lot to bring in the sunlight and also bring in fresh air. So for those very old group vines, so they belong to your family, and you are the one that is uh, taking care of that. And so how is that different from the other groups? Are you working together with some research institutions? So as for the technology of growing uh, grapes, we are guided by the research institutions from the village, from the township level, and each and every year. There are some trainings from those professors and technicians. Uh, we are working together with experts and professors from Hebei University of uh, Agriculture and Beijing University of Agriculture. And they give us a lot of trainings and instructions on a yearly basis. And we have actually been doing this for quite a number of years. So this kind of trainings and instructions, they have been very popular in this place. We have been working together with Peking University and Hebei University of Agriculture and some research institutions, and we are collaborating together. And each and every year, there, are, there is a lot of training. So you, as an owner of the culture, and you know a lot about this business. Uh, how do you think this kind of collaboration helps you for technical exchanges? So we truly benefit a lot because we are the great farmers here, and we have uh, inherited a lot of uh, traditional techniques. But right now, we have to combine our own um, practice with those advanced techniques and methodologies. Because in a textbook, it's very rare that you could find such methodologies and the vineyard here is quite different. So we need to combine our own um, practices with some new technologies, but we also need to apply those new technologies here according to our own reality. So we have something that is very distinctive, very unique to ourselves, but we also need to borrow experiences from the other vineyards in the nation. So can you give us some tangible examples? Can you tell us, for example, what do others uh, do in maintaining their grapevine? What do other people do in this season? Well, in about one week, we are going to cut the branches. We're going to harvest the grapes. We have to cut those branches. Uh, how well you do this can determine what yield you can have next year. So does that mean that the more you cut, the more uh, harvest you have next year? Well, it depends on the situation. It depends on what vibrance it has for this year. And it has a lot of uh, vibrance for this year. You just need to cut it a little bit and uh, 
So can you give us one example and tell us some specifics? But you don't need to actually cut it for us. You just need to give us some verbal introduction. Well, no worries, because he lives, she lives here, and uh, you can actually uh, visit her home, and uh, she's going to tell you more about those specifics. All right, so let's just pay a visit to her vineyard. So if it is in other places, they just work on one uh, grape tree, because they only have one chunk of the tree. But here, in Xuanhua, so the grape vine actually contains many different trees. For example, we have one tree here, we have another trunk here, so it's like a sprawling shape, and it spreads and stretches to all directions, and it features multiple trunks. And it's like a Chinese fan. So that is why we have to adopt a very different cutting strategy. So a lot of the people, they actually live here, they both work and live here. Yes. And now we're going to uh, one of the uh, villagers' home to see uh, what, what it looks like, uh, how people want to live in the vineyard, especially so close uh, to the uh, grape day plant. Hi. So you live and work here? Yes. So this is your own house? Yes. So the vineyard is right outside. So when you build the house, you just build it along or near the vineyard? Yes, because this is very conducive uh, for management. So how big a vineyard are you managing? We are actually managing seven vineyards. So what do you do on a daily basis? We just do management. We um, lose, uh, loosen the soil and we uh, wrap the uh, different branches of uh, grapes. So we do a lot of uh, uh, specific works. We water the grapes and we spray pesticide. So you are both living and working here, and what about your kids? Well, they also, they also live here. So how many years have you been doing this? 40, 50 years. Well, I don't remember. I've lost count of the years. So 40, 50 years. So, so you're a neighbor to uh, Mr. Chow. Yes. So when one is in need of help and the others would come to help. Uh, also work here. Uh, they have this uh, very uh, leisure, uh, leisure life uh, living uh, in the small town, uh, especially now uh, with all the grapes, uh, uh, with all the grapes uh, uh, mature and sold. So they have uh, the next stage of work uh, that, that is to bury it, bury it uh, to, uh, for the winter and uh, waiting for the next spring. Uh, and we are going to see a more old and ancient uh, grape. Uh, uh, and Mr. Chow told me that there's a grape that's, there's a grape uh, actually vineyard over 1,000 years old, and we're going to see it. So you were talking about this vineyard with a history of 1,000 years, and does that truly that old? Is that truly that old? Yes, it is very old, and but we have uh, actually brought new lives to this old grapevine. So this is a village. I see a lot of the farmers they are living here, and so when you go outside, well. Is it very difficult because all the roads in the city have been expanded, but here the roads are still very narrow? Well, we have in the urban planning to renovate this road, and it's currently under planning. 
so it has already been well planned. So then, what do you do with those uh, grape vines? Well, we're going to preserve those uh, grape vine and uh, vineyard. Walk out of the vineyard now in this small village, and uh, you could find that each household uh, they have some of them uh, they have these uh, this advertising and also marks uh, indicating that uh, they are selling grapes or they are planting grapes. So it is a local economy to grow grapes and to sell it, uh, and uh, not just in this this one vineyard. Actually, there are more vineyards here. Uh, more than just the one, maybe a dozen. Uh, so, Mr. Chiao, tell me how many vineyards you have here. Well, depending on what kind of sites you're talking about, and uh, if you're talking about the very large ones, we have three, uh, each with an acre of uh, 50 mu, and on the north of the road, we also have three such vineyard. So, putting them together, it's roughly 300 mu. So we have six big vineyards in this village alone. So, can you imagine the whole city? Well, if you talk about whole city, it's roughly 1,500 such vineyards and with different sizes, of course. So this is this is another uh, grape vine. Yes. So this man here is selling fruits and vegetables and grapes. More people selling fruits, uh, selling fruits and vegetables here. <laughs> you have been living here for quite a number of years, but the city has been developing and it's actually reducing the acre of grapes and vineyards. So it's quite challenging to preserve the vineyard. And can you tell us some specific examples that people are paying attention to preservation? In Xuanhua, we have a couple of uh, major milestones. For example, in 2013, the vineyard in Xuanhua was designated by FAO as a key global agricultural heritage, and this has mobilized the enthusiasm of the government. So he is the SF delivery uh, service. This is the express service, and uh, so the express service truly helped us a lot, and you can ask a couple of questions here, and they are very helpful, and they managed to sell our uh, groups to the outside world. So is this a designated uh, place of your service? Yes. So you sell, uh, you help uh, shape the groups uh, outside? Yes. So how much uh, is your volume? Well, at the best season, it's uh, 1,000 boxes. To which kind of places? But to all, all across the country. So you help uh, set the price or uh, just work on the uh, package. So we're using this kind of uh, bags and we put it in this kind of plastic bags and then we put it in a paper box. Well, I can show you one fully packaged one. Well, it's a vacuum bag. Well, yes, uh, this can guard the grips from um, pressure and uh, Inside it's very uh, firm, but it's also uh, floated with air and it can guard against the pressure. So at the busiest season, you can ship uh, 1,000 boxes. And do you cover just this village? No, we actually have a couple of sites here in this village. All right, thank you very much. Developing China, so we can see that uh, the uh, express companies actually set up posts here to help those farmers to uh, sell the grapes. 
uh, actually a lot of these grapes are sold online. Uh, so, tell me what percentage of grapes is sold online? Well, I think it's 40 percent. So how do that how do you compare that to a couple of years ago? Well, a few years ago it was less than 10 percent, and SF Express service is improving its quality in terms of packaging and delivery speed. And we truly have uh, made them very busy, and we have to give them a very big thanks. Uh, last year they solved the difficulty of packaging and the customers are very satisfied and we are very satisfied as well. And this year I believe their uh, sales revenue, their sales volume has increased by 40 folds because they solved the packaging problem. And it's super fast. So your family is also doing business in tourism and also in grape sales. So your son is helping you with, with your business. So what kind of expectation do you have on the next generation? Do you hope that they can be part of this business? And how helpful can they become? Well, I had a lot of expectations because my son uh, well, I'm getting old and it's very uh, challenging for me to work both on seals and also uh, planning so I hope that my son can come back to his hometown and to pick up this industry because this has been going on for generations uh, he's right now in the tourism industry and he is spreading the message to a larger audience. He's telling the country that Xuanhua's grapes are the best. And uh, so he is uh, very committed to what he is doing. And we believe through the channel of tourism, we can sell more grapes. We can have a better reputation. It can drive sales very effectively, and as his father, I'm very proud, and uh, I think the government is also helping us. Well, your son is also very filial, and he cares a lot about your family business. All right, we are here, and this is the number one or the first grapevine under heaven. So this is a vineyard that has the longest history. And this is a representative site supported by the government. So you can walk in directly. Yes. So the very original uh, roots of the grape tree was at the very center, and then we brought new lives to that. We uh, dug deeper, and then we grew uh, some other uh, trees. So, which was the? So, what is the oldest tree? Well, this one. So, all the other uh, trees were actually uh, its descendants. You can understand it this way. So, the grapes here. You said that it's it's very tasty. It's very delicious, and uh, it's very big and juicy. So is that also related to the soil and water conditions here? So Xianghua, as you know, we have very good soil. The soil is very suitable for the growth of uh, grapes, so the grapes here in Xianhua, they are very vibrant, and it's very tasty, and it grows very big, and it has very uh, thin skin. In the 
ancient times, it is it was sent to the royal family as the gift. And uh, Xianhua last year was uh, given a big title by the Hebei provincial government, uh, and I didn't know the specific name of uh, this uh, awards or title. But you know, throughout history, it has been sent to the royal family as a gift. So nowadays, I think you have very good sales every year. Yes, uh, it's a very popular product on the market. From the beginning years of the founding of the People's Republic of China, we are sold to Beijing, Tianjin, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Macau. Uh, that was from the very early years. And people in other provinces didn't have the privilege to eat the grapes from here because we had very limited productivity. And at the very beginning, uh, grapes was uh, grapes were uh, grapes here were used as a means to help make some uh, foreign exchange revenue for the country. But right now, the acre has uh, shrank, but the production has improved. And if you talk about the groups in Huailai and uh, the groups in Huailai, they actually were introduced from here in the 1980s. So they basically copied our business and industry. And uh, in 1920s, we were under uh, significant pressure of supply. And so we are very unique, both in terms of uh, plantation and also in reputation. And uh, we have a very good brand image. And uh, we have uh, 20 years of history uh, running the uh, product as a brand. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chiao. Thanks for showing us around. And I wish the very best of your business going forward. And I also wish the very best pre preservation of this well, business. This is the mineral All right, thank you that very much. has a history over 1,000 years. Uh, and you could see uh, this is the uh, grid, the, fun the funnel shape grid that we're looking at over 1,000 year history. Uh, and people are protecting this, this place. Well, luckily, uh, because the fast urbanization is uh, is affecting the uh, great production here, but uh, what's what's most in, is important thing here is to protect the the special method of planting and keep and keeping and growing grapes here. Uh, this is the most important thing. Yeah, thank you for watching, and this, you're watching CGTN. Bye bye.